You see, we have planted the seed of doubt and now we are watering it with our words and you know, teaching it to grow. And you know, before you know it, something big, a major issue strikes. And this is when you, you hear somebody say, oh, I knew it was going to happen. I knew it. I knew, I knew my marriage is going to fall apart. I knew that I was going to get sick. I knew, I knew, I knew my health would, get, you know, would pull me this far. You know, what you did was, you, know, you, pre you prophesied you know, over your own failure. You said what you believed and it actually came true. <coughs> Praise God. You know, have anybody told you that you can plant a seed of faith? Yeah. Mm. Has anybody told you that you can, you know, actually plant something good inside your love and let it grow to be something great? God does not want us to be in misery. No, no. God does not want us to be in despair. No. That's why He gave us faith. The Bible says we have a measure of faith, you see, and He gave us faith as small as a master seed, and this faith has the power and the potential to do something big. Praise God. Let me share something with you um, before I close. Maybe, um, maybe you did not know about this. Whenever you bow down to God, this is, this is something I've noticed. Whenever you bow down to God and you know, to tell God you know, your problems, He actually feels for you. He actually, you know, he actually has compassion on you. The Bible says that He cares about your situation. You know, the Bible says that, you know, um, um, the Bible says that Jesus has sympathy, you know, with all of us. He knows what we're going through. But, do you remember the story of the two blind men? It's in, it's in Matthew uh, chapter 20. It says that, you know, Jesus was passing by and they cried out, Son of David, have mercy on us. Son of David, have mercy on us. The people tried to stop them, but they actually continued saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And Jesus came to them and asked them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said, Lord, we want to see. And Jesus said, According to your faith, it's done for you. And instantly they could see. People who were once blind could see. Something I've noticed in this story is that, um, is that when they said, Lord, have mercy on us, it seemed like, you know, it was, they were asking Jesus to actually have pity on them, you know, to actually, you know, um, feel sorry for, for them. It kind of felt like, oh, you know, Lord, Lord, have mercy on us, you know, you, you see our situation, you know what we're going through, you know, you know, you know, let me tell you that actually God knows, God, that Jesus knew that they were blind. God knows our situation. God knows what we are going through. And he actually does feel for us. He actually, had, he actually does have compassion on our situation. But, you know, the Bible, I mean, God, God is not going to act on your behalf because he feels sorry for you. He is going to act on your behalf because you have faith. Because of your faith. That's why Jesus actually um, he came to them and said, what do you want me to do for you? He wanted, he wanted for it to come actually out of, he wanted for them, he wanted, he wanted for it to come from themselves. Yeah. You see, Lord, I can't see. This is what I need. I want to, I want to receive my sight. I want to receive my sight. And so Jesus, what he did, he was, you know, planting a seed inside of them. Because the way I see it, it was not, there were two blind men and then they got healed. It is the, there were two blind men. A seed was planted inside of them. And then there was the healing. Praise God. So Jesus asked, what do you want me to do for you? Praise God. So, we need faith. We need faith. God is not going to just act because we feel sorry for you. God knows the problem that we go through. You know, all around the world there's so many issues. But God is not going to just act because, you know, we, he, has, he feels sorry for us. He's going to act because we have faith, because of our faith. That's why Jesus said, your faith has made you well. Praise God. So these two, so these two blind men actually could see. Praise God, because of their faith. 
Hallelujah. So I want to ask you a question. Can you see? Can you see that you are blessed? Yeah. Can you see your situations turning around? Yes. Can you see yourself delivered? Can you see yourself healed? So if it starts in your spirit, there is an opportunity for that seed in your spirit to actually grow and become something big. And you get the you get actually the outcome that God intended for you to have. Yeah. Praise God. You know, um, you see, this world says that I'll believe it when I see it, you see. But the word of God says, I'll see it when I believe it. Praise God. Yes. So we have been given a measure of faith. And it's the master seed that can be planted in our spirit. So, do you want to be a mountain mover? Yes. Are you ready to be a mountain mover? Yes. You know, I believe God has a great purpose and a plan for this country. Yes. yes. He does. I believe there is a great revival that's coming. Hallelujah. Amen. So what we need is men and women who is actually able to have faith, to be able to move the mountains. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Because there are so many mountains of doubts and people saying, oh, you will never work out. The Prime Minister is not even Christian. Oh, you know, you will never work out. But we need people of God who have faith and say, we can't move the mountains. And there is going to be a great revival here in this country. Praise God. People are going to be saved. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. You see, you shouldn't think that you are too small to make a difference. You shouldn't think that you are too small. Because having a faith as small as a master seed can be able to move mountains. You shouldn't think you're too small. Well, if you think you're too small, if you think you are too small to make a difference, then you have never been in bed with a mosquito. Yeah. You have never been in bed with a mosquito if you believe you're too small to make a change. Because I remember um, in Africa when we were young, um, when I was, uh, you know, um, so we lived um, in a house, so we were very um, lucky because my father was a carpenter, so we actually built a, um, a brick house, but everybody else was straw, you know, so we were considered rich in a way, because we built uh, actually like a brick house, but it wasn't really a brick house, it was in mud, you know, it was, so, um, so in this house, you know, it was easy at night for mosquitoes to come because, you know, the windows, there was no windows, there was no glass windows, you know, the doors, you know, it, it was mostly opened. So, it was easy for mosquitoes to come in. But, in my parents' bedroom, there was this thing, I don't know how to describe it, but I don't even know what it's called. It's this, it, it was this white cloth thing that goes around, you know, the bed. Mosquito net. Yeah, yeah mosquito net. So, they had that in my, in, in my parents' bedroom. But the sad thing was that in our bedroom, we didn't have that. So, trust me, I know how it feels like to be in bed with a mosquito. <laughs> Something so small can actually make a difference. Praise God. <laughs> Something so small can make a difference. Even if it's one mosquito, it will kill you to death. <laughs> so, you are not too small to make a difference. You are bigger than the mosquito. Praise God. <laughs> so, let, it, let us start planting seeds in our lives, yeah. over Australia, mm -hmm. in Adelaide, at heart, yeah. mm -hmm. in our children's lives, I don't have children, in our grandchildren's lives, for you guys. <laughs> you see, we need to start planting seeds. And right now, and we're gonna see mountains moving and obeying us. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> just starts with a seed in our mind. If you think negative, it'll produce it. If you can change your thinking, you can change anything. And then once you've thought it, you've got to speak it. Let the weak say. Let the poor say. I am rich. 
So what do we see over Australia? See revival. What do we see over Heights? We see revival. We see these boys and girls becoming fine young men and women, filled with the Holy Spirit. You think it. You change your thinking. And you change your vocabulary. And then you see. You're going to see not my mind, nor my good ideas. Okay, let's stand together, shall we? Well done, Dad. Well done.